Welcome to Service Georgina on Rogers TV. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. Our goal is to bring you information to help you understand more about the many services and departments of the town of Georgina. Today's show will focus on our fire services and fire prevention. And joining me is Chief Ron Jenkins, Director of Emergency Services and Fire Chief, and Kaylee Howder, Fire Prevention Officer. Welcome to you both. Glad to be here, Mayor, once again. No problem. And we, I always enjoy having you on here, Chief. You have reams of information to, to share with, uh, with the public. So certainly fire services is one of our most important departments of, of any municipality, let, let alone Georgina. And I know, Chief, you want to give a, a bit of an analogy and an explanation about um, the, the three lines of defense for, for any fire safe community. So I'll, I'll let you uh, explain that. Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. And uh, so I know in the past we focused on, on uh, the fire trucks and response, and we'll probably touch on that a bit today as well. But uh, really, and you, and you touched on it, there's three lines of, of defense uh, for the fire service. There's uh, public education, uh, inspections, code enforcement, and response. And each one is equally important. And I know if we can, through the magic of, of TV, if we can, can show a picture of a three-legged stool. So if community safety is what's being held up, uh, community fire safety. Uh, it's being held up by, by the three, three lines or the three legs, uh, which is public education, inspections and enforcement, and emergency response. If any one of those three legs of that stool become weak or not as strong as the other, then the stool obviously will, will fall over and thereby community fire safety uh, is not what it should be. So that's, that's kind of what we'd like to touch on today uh, through, I got uh, Captain Howder here to speak to basically those three lines of defense, those three legs of the stool and how that ensures that we have a fire safe community. And, and that's the most important thing for, for any community is the protection of, of not only uh, life, but, but property of, of the entire community. And I think you have some from fire stats to, uh, to share with us, Chief, um, from the last, I was so, the last year or so. Yeah, so, so typically, uh, unfortunately, uh, our, our uh, service will run over 2,000 runs a year. Of those, we can usually count on about 50 structure fires or 50 fires of some type, which are reportable fires. And tragically, we have, over the past year and a bit, suffered uh, three fatalities. Uh, and we were out to a, a small explosion again just, just last night. So there's much that the community can do to ensure that we have a fire-safe community. But one of the stats because everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. Exactly. And, and I know I've shared this stat with you before, Mayor, and I've used this stat just in uh, you know, some straw polls when I'm out in the community myself. And, and this stat is from the National Fire Protection Association. It's somewhat dated. It's 2009, but it's still relevant today. So the number of home fires your household can expect in an average lifetime. Well, most people will say they're not going to have a fire in their household. Well, st the statistics show five. Now that may be a fire that's not reportable. That may be the pot left on the stove, activates the smoke alarm, early notification, pizza box left in the oven, but each one of those is a near miss. And the only difference between those fires and a tragic fire is early notification. And I know Captain Howder will speak to that uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment. Uh, the other thing is chances your household will have a reported home fire in an average lifetime. So uh, a fire that you need the fire service, one in four. Wow. Uh, chances that someone in your household will suffer a fire injury, and we never ever want anybody to be injured, but the average average for that is one in ten. So I guess my point being is that fires do and will happen, and we need to make sure we prepare for and take everything we can to prevent them. And that's that's really what the goal is today. And I think you're right. Everybody thinks it's going to happen to to somebody else. You know that they do what they need to do in their home um, to, to keep it safe. But there's always things that, that happen and there's always more that any of us can do to, uh, and to keep our, our, our lives and our family and our home safe. So what does uh, fire safety include? Um, I know that there's some areas that uh, you want to touch on and then maybe uh, um, Captain Howder. I didn't call you a captain before, Kaylee. My apologies. It's all good, Mayor. Well, I'll, yeah, well, I'll certainly, I'll certainly turn this over to, uh, to Captain Howder, but Certainly working smoke alarms, uh, you know, ensuring that uh, your electrical service is inspected, that your fireplace is cleaned. There's all those things from a public education standpoint, those messages that we tried to deliver, uh, you know, seasonally and, and daily uh, need to get out there. And it's, it's so easy for someone to forget. 
so just uh, very quickly, so the uh, fire we had last night or explosion was a gas uh, fireplace. Uh, fortunately, there was no injuries. Fortunately, the fire uh, didn't proceed beyond the gas fireplace, but that was a fireplace that looks like it had not been maintained. And there were four smoke alarms in that home, none of them working. So again, I'll maybe take this point to, to turn it over to somebody who can speak far better and uh, with more knowledge on it than myself, Captain Hunter. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mayor, for having us today. Um, yeah, so just kind of touch on, like the Chief said, a lot of what we do is public education. So it's making the public aware of what's required under the fire code. Um, so we work quite closely with um, our community groups. So a, a lot of the community groups here in Georgina, um, as well as our senior groups um, within our schools um, to educate them. And it's all about um, teaching fire safe practices and lifestyle changes to make people safer. Um, a, a big thing, again, that we focus on is gonna be working smoke alarms, having that early warning to get out and then having a plan for if they do go off, what are you supposed to do? So we do work very closely with a lot of our community groups to, to have that, that information spread. And of course, COVID has changed a bit of the way we do things, a lot more virtual meetings now, um, but we're still, we're still out there, still in the community and, and heavily involved in that as well. And I know at times too, you've done almost the door-to-door. -door. I remember uh, a knock coming to, to my door at one point, uh, just, you know, fire department wanting to make sure that I had working smoke detectors and so it's that that personal touch too at times that uh, really helps um what can you tell me about fire inspections and the the fire code enforcement because that's certainly a huge part of of what you do yes yes it is so basically what we do in the fire prevention team is we enforce the fire the ontario fire code so that's going into buildings making sure that they are up to the standard of the law um, when it comes to the fire code. So that's conducting inspections. Um, if there is violations found, we do issue orders um, that give owners a timeline on when they can have those violations repaired. So in the, in the end, it, it does come down to us just making sure that the community is safe. Um, we do have the ability to issue tickets with some items that are of a higher, I guess what we would look at as being a uh, a worse violation would be something like not having working smoke alarms, um, not having working carbon monoxide alarms, uh, wedging open a fire door, that sort of thing. Um, we do have the ability to issue tickets on the spot for those things, um, as well as if an owner isn't interested in making the corrections and, and don't feel like it's a requirement, then we do go to court with some of our files as well um, and, and have it resolved through there. Obviously, that's a last step for us. We want to mm -hmm. educate the owners, um, make sure that everyone's aware of what their responsibility is, um, and then have it go from there. Okay. And if I could just, Mayor, if I could, if I could just expand on, on this, the uh, Home Safe Home program that you touched on. Uh, we do, obviously COVID has impacted that. Uh, when we do suffer a, a fire on a, on a street, we do go out with our after the fire program and, uh, you know, make sure that we have working smoke alarms because there's no better uh, motivator than, than someone who's seen a fire on a street and realizes that fires can and oh, do yeah. happen. Unfortunately, exactly. looking, looking at a recent stat from the Ontario Fire Marshal, uh, only 45% of fires have a working smoke alarm. Uh, some of them, some are maybe to the point the damage they can't tell if it was operable at the time of the fire, but that's that's a staggering statistic. And early notification is key. And, and we've talked about it on our previous programs about the speed of fire. And you yeah. really and truly only have seconds to get out. I know you've shown a video in the past, and it is scary to see how fast a, a fire can spread. So and how quickly. Um, going back to uh, the fire services and, and the responses, um, that's basically, that's more what people think of when they think of a fire department. They think of the fire truck coming down their, their road, their street, their area to, to put out a fire. Um, what can you tell us about some of the, the um, methods of uh, the fire response that we have here in the town? So, so we are very well equipped in this town, and that's a, you know, a thank you to uh, Mayor and Council for equipping our fire service and allowing us to be prepared. Uh, we are called Georgina Fire and Rescue, uh, but we really and truly are an all-hazard service. We respond to, as, as you know, uh, we respond to ice rescues during the winter. We respond to confined space. We respond to hazardous materials, uh, automobile, acc automobile accidents, uh, fires, medical responses. 
Uh, there's really not too much that we do not respond to and are equipped to uh, to deal with when we respond. Because certainly being by uh, the lake does um, bring us more activity than than you know other municipalities that don't have that. So I know we do have uh, the the rescue boat. We've got uh, the training. I've seen the officers uh, training uh, um, over the years. So it is. Um, a wide variety and then we have our, our rural areas too with uh, farms and, and silos and and uh, barns that uh, are large structures as well so certainly um, you know it, it's a, a varied amount of, of response um, the next area we're going to get into I know we're going to take a break here in a minute but um, uh, we'll talk about fire inspections and why they're while why they are conducted and I'll probably have to take the break as we get into this, but if we can start off about, uh, maybe the chief can introduce it. We've got a couple minutes here. Yes, so fire inspections are, are very, very important. Captain Howder touched on, on the inspection program, uh, you know, largely from the, from the residential standpoint, but we can't fix or we can't enforce what we don't know. So it's very important that we get out there and do the inspections and Captain Howder can speak on the type of inspections that we do and when we do them. Uh, we do have a large, uh, uh, building status within within the town of Georgina and very varied from marinas to manufacturing to commercial, each one requiring their own unique uh, it, uh, inspection. Uh, something we've moved to over the past couple of years and Captain Howder has been instrumental in, in pushing this uh, is in-service inspections. And uh, maybe she could speak to that in, in more detail because she just uh, completed some training with our in-service crews. Great, Captain Howder. Yeah, so our in-service inspections is a program that we have started with our working with the fire crews. So they'll be out in the community um, and they'll be doing some basic fire inspections to just make sure that the maintenance of a building is up to date. Um, so when we conduct an inspection, again, like I said, we're looking for anything that could cause an, uh, a larger issue if a fire started. So we're making sure that items in a building are going to function properly the way they are designed to function so that if a fire starts, there'll be minimal damage and hopefully no injuries. So when we look at a building, we look at it that way as a as it was designed, will it function properly if a fire happens? So you would do that with uh, apartment buildings and, and commercial buildings as well then? Yes, through residential, uh, businesses, offices, any type of building, that's what we look for. Good. Well, we're going to take a, a quick break here, but be sure to come back. We're going to be talking more about uh, fire services. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina on Rogers TV, Georgina. Welcome back. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina on Rogers TV. Today, we're talking with Chief Ron Jenkins and Captain Kaylee Hout regarding our fire services and fire prevention. Now, we had left off just talking about uh, fire inspections, and maybe uh, Kaylee, um, sorry, Captain Howder, uh, if you can uh, sort of wrap that part up, and then we'll get into uh, what happens if uh, a violation is found. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, like what I was explaining before, uh, we look at the building um, to make sure that if a fire happens, it doesn't spread further than the original unit. So say if you're thinking about a plaza that has multiple units, we're looking at fire separations um, to make sure that if a fire starts in one unit, it's not going to spread. So that includes fire doors, it includes the walls of that unit. Um, so that's a big thing that we look for to make sure that the damage to a building in case of a fire doesn't spread further than the original unit. Um, same thing with early warning devices. So whether it's in your home or if it's in a business, we want to make sure that people are aware that there is an issue in the building if there's a fire. So making sure that the system has been maintained and will operate um, the way it's supposed to. Uh, same with sprinkler systems, right? So you want to make sure it's been maintained, that it will operate. And again, that's looking at making sure a fire doesn't spread beyond the original spot that it started. So that's that's kind of what our big things that we look at. Yeah, and I guess it, every situation is, is different. If you're looking at inspection of a, of a restaurant as opposed to uh, a general retail store, an apartment, or a, a, a home. So everybody, every everyone has a different thing that you would be really focusing in on, I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely. So when it comes to, um, if you find a violation, uh, what happens next? 
Yeah, so if we find a violation, we do educate the owner. So we educate the owner, let them know why it's an issue and why we're going to be asking them to fix it. Um, so the fire code states that it is the owner's responsibility to make sure that their building is compliant with the fire code. So it's an education piece to the owner, um, but then we will issue an order. So a fire inspection order will be issued to the owner with a timeline that states it has to be um, completed or the work has to be done within a specific time. Um, once that order is issued, we would follow up with the owner after the time and ensure that the inspection was completed. Um, there are certain things that, like I had mentioned before, we can issue a ticket for on the spot. Um, and then there's other items, if it's uh, immediate threat to life, um, if the building is very unsafe, uh, we do have the authority to act immediately. Um, and that can be done as well. So we, we never want to get there, um, but it has been done um, just for the safety of, of other people. So well, yeah, I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say you have to ensure that the, that the safety is maintained for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, if a violation is not corrected, we we have and we will bring the owner to court on that item then. Um, again, we're, we're looking at fire safety. We're looking at the safety of people in a building, and that's not something we want to play around with. Um, no, because we, we've all seen the, the tragic news stories of, you know, a fire with fatalities where, you know, in some cases there have been violations that have been, you know, you know, made the owner made aware of and, and you know, you want to make sure that uh, they're followed up on. And if it's not safe, there are mechanisms that you as a as a fire services are, are able to do. And and it's not that um, you're, you know, uh, going out of business just for for the sake of inspection. This this is uh, truly life and death. And, and it's something that uh, it should be taken very seriously by uh, by the property owners. So what type of inspections are, are done here in, in Georgina? Yeah, so here in Georgina, um, our inspections are complaint-based and request-based. Um, so we do get a lot of complaint inspections regarding fire safety items that we follow up on. Um, request inspections can include anything from like a licensing that they require a letter from the fire department. Um, it can just be a maintenance item that they who's ever the owner of the business is requests a fire inspection just to make sure that they are um, in compliance with the fire code. Uh, it can be concerns, uh, maybe uh, questions they just don't know the answer to, so then we will come out and address those issues. Um, and then mandated annual inspections, which would be our vulnerable occupancies. So nursing homes, retirement homes were mandated by the OFM to do those inspections. So we do those as well. Um, like I had mentioned before, we have our in-service inspections, which our crews are assisting with. Um, so we're excited to start that program as well. And then we, we do think of fire safety prior to a building even being built. So what we do as well is we're heavily involved in the building plan process. So if a plan gets um, submitted to the building department, it does we do get an opportunity to take a look at it and address any fire safety issues, even prior to a building being built. Um, so that gives us a chance to kind of address anything or answer questions even that an owner may have in regards yeah. to a new building. Certainly at, at council meetings, when we have a, a public meeting on a development, you are part of, of that review. And it, sometimes it's, it's uh, you know, the, the, the access of fire trucks uh, through a, a a subdivision or a plan or, or through a plaza. So it's something that uh, is thought of, as you say, even before buildings are built, we, we know we have a number of older buildings and plazas in town that, that if they were being built today might have different requirements. So that's where the inspections are, are key to uh, making sure that that, that plaza remains uh, safe. So Chief Jenkins, how, how does fire prevention work with the fire fighting side of things? Uh, well, obviously very closely. And I just want to you know, touch base on a, a couple of points that, that Captain Howder mentioned. So uh, currently, as, as was stated, it's complaint or request. Uh, we very much want to move to a routine inspection where depending on the type of occupancy, that building is, is inspected once a year, twice a, or twice a year, whatever whatever the routine may be. And there's, there's guidelines from fire underwriters uh, that, that suggest the, the typical inspection times. Because uh, we can, we find anything, and when I say we, it's, it's Captain Howder and her team, and the firefighters are out doing inspections. Anywhere from gasoline cans stored in electrical rooms, 
uh, to uh, fire doors, uh, escape, fire escape doors being chained shut just because of security issues, not understanding or putting the, in the thought process uh, escape and that it should have fire occur. So we really need to move to that, to that, uh, that type of inspection program. As, as far as the prevention team and how they work with firefighters, it's, it's they're, they're hand in hand. Uh, the firefighters are right out in our community. They're responding to medical calls. They're responding to calls every day. Uh, when they're out there, they've been trained through fire prevention to look for various types of hazards. Uh, and that's part of the inspection program. They can either speak to the owner at the time to have that hazard addressed immediately if it's something that, that could be dealt with. Or if it's something a little more serious, uh, they will refer it to Kaylee and her team to go and do a, an official inspection. Uh, when we do, and unfortunately we do have fires, uh, when we do have fires and uh, Captain Howder and her team are then our task with investigating the cause of that fire. And I'll maybe turn it over to Captain Howder to explain why it's so important that we determine uh, the cause and how that influences where we go. Great, thank you. Captain Howder. Yeah, so with the in investigation, so when we do have a fire, um, I'm a trained and certified fire investigator, so I will be called to the scene. Um, and we do an investigation to determine the cause. So what caused the fire and what actions uh, leading up to that fire were taken um, or were not taken. And that ties back quite closely to how we look at public education and what we're talking about in our public education. Um, and perhaps it, it shows us where the community needs more information um, or we, we feel like potentially we've, we have to cover um, more closely. And that goes back to the, the picture of the, the stool with community fire safety, where we work so closely with in, in public education um, in not only our inspections, but also our emergency response when it comes to investigating a fire that has occurred. Um, so that definitely ties all, all together and gives us that ability to look at perhaps what are our major causes of fire in the community and what do we have to be educating the community on? Because certainly I know um, dryer fires, for example, and I think you just recently posted, uh, um, you know, making sure you clean out your uh, CO, your, your um, vents from your home for any CO2. So it's, it's sometimes it's those little things that we, we kind of all forget about that can become those big things in, in our homes and, and in uh, businesses. So um, that's good to, to focus in on those, those issues that come to light. And if um, I just, sorry, Mayor, if I just jump, you just reminded me of, of a piece there. So uh, one of the, the uh, signage that we put out this past year was on cigarettes and uh, maybe Kaylee or Captain Hunter could quickly speak to that. And we're running short on time. That's yeah, so we, did, we did have a number of fires that were caused by, cigarettes being disposed into uh, a planter pot or not on a proper ashtray. Um, and again, that's why we put out that information because we had a number of fires, I think three or four fires that were caused um, as a result of, of smoking and the disposal, the improper disposal of cigarette butts. Yeah, people thought they were putting them into, into dirt, but really some of those planters are, are more of a moss, almost a, a more flammable material, so. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are. Yeah, we also have something new within the, the fire department. We have a drone program. Uh, maybe Chief, uh, you can tell us a little bit, and I think uh, Captain Howder can uh, give the details. I believe she's uh, licensed to fly it, and, and you're not. I, I, I am not, they will not let me uh, touch the drone. Uh, yes, that's, uh, I guess it's been a year, maybe a little over a year we've had that drone. It's proved invaluable, again, for our fire, investiga fire investigations. Uh, the, the, the Ontario Fire Marshal, uh, they've come to rely on it when they come to Georgina, unfortunately, when we do have a fire, but I'll, I'll let Kaylee speak in detail to it, or Captain Hunter, sorry. Yes, I, I am a certified pilot with the drone. Um, it, we have, like the chief had mentioned, we have used it at uh, multiple fires to assist the, the Office of the Fire Marshal with getting uh, documentation for that. We also had the opportunity to work quite closely with some other departments within the town um, to use the drone and assist them as well. So it's been it's been definitely proven as a valuable tool for us. Um, and we're excited to see where it goes uh, with this new year and, and adding a few new things to what we can use it for and and uh, within the town. So it's been good. It, it is a, a new tool for, for many organizations. Uh, I saw one recently where they helped rescue a dog out of a bog um, with a sausage <laughs> on the drone leading the dog out. and. 
you know, even like for the search and rescues, uh, trying to, to find somebody out on the lake, whether it's summer or winter, people get confused. They don't know where they are. They get disoriented. Um, so it certainly can, can help with those situations and, and certainly with the fires to be able to get that true bird's eye view of, uh, of the fire, both during the fire and, uh, and afterwards. So it's something I know uh, the chief had, had had it on his radar, no pun intended, to uh, for, for a while, and I'm, I'm sure he's uh, anxious to uh, get a chance to, to try to operate it, but uh, thank you, Captain Howder, for, for that, because I know it's, it's quite an in-depth program. You were telling me uh, to, to do the training, so thank you for, for doing that. I'm not sure if there's anything further you want to, any other highlights you want to, uh, to mention? We're just about to wrap up, but... Uh, no, no uh, uh, Mayor, just, uh, just very happy to be able to have uh, Captain Howder speak to the, you know, the three lines of defense and how important they are and how they, they interrelate with each other. Great. And, uh, you know, everybody pictures the, the truck going down the street, but it's, uh, it's really the, the prevention and education that they're key as well. Great. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. Thank you both. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this has been Service Georgina on Rogers TV. See you next time.